What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cracker Season 3, Episode 18. Tons to talk about. Uh, I have some shoutouts coming your way. Uh, review. And uh, like I said, a couple rants, a couple questions we're going to answer. Um, let's get into it. Today is WrestleMania Sunday. Can't wait to watch the damn thing. Uh, love wrestling. Big fan. Uh, used to be crazy fan when I was a kid. Used to be obsessed with it. Now I'm kind of like leveled out, I guess. Um... A lot of my friends are actually going tonight, which I'm, I'm jealous. Mickey Bass's, they got second, second row. Um, a lot of my friends went to the fan access thing. They were very excited because they don't have fan access uh, usually. Uh, the past couple of WrestleManias they had in New York, they haven't had a fan access. It's usually in other cities, and I was always pissed. I'm like, that kind of sucks. I was like, I want to go to WrestleMania, but I like to go to one where I can go through the whole thing, kind of like a Comic-Con. And uh, it's the first time I actually have it in the city with fan access. So my friend was uh, beyond excited. Got to meet Triple H, he met HBK, Ricky the Dragon, Steamboat, like all the everybody. He was just like, oh, it's awesome. But he's still jealous that I met the Undertaker and Paul Bearer. <laughs> anyway, and the Million Dollar Man. <laughs> um, besides the point, I'm not going to really get too much into that. Um, I'm going to go over some questions, like I said, uh, some, some comments, some suggestions, uh, and reviews. Go over a few things, and I'm going to do some shout outs towards the end. Uh, but anyway. Let's get into reviews, then I'm going to go into some other stuff, because the reviews take some time anyway. Um, one thing I would like to discuss, if anyone knows, because I don't know. That's right, I don't know. Um, when I was reading Spider-Man number 53, with uh, Ben Riley fighting Venom, this is what I don't get. Which, this is going to be me, maybe I'll be able to answer my own question, I don't know. Ben Riley, whenever Peter Parker fought Venom, his spider sense wouldn't work, because the symbiote... He said maybe because it was, it was bonded to him, it, it doesn't trigger his spider sense, it found a way around it. But Ben Riley, when Venom attacks, his spider sense goes off. He knows he's coming. So I'm curious how the hell he knows how he has a spider sense against Venom, and Spidey, the regular Spider, doesn't. Maybe it is because he was bonded to him and found a way around. I don't know. But uh, that was my question. How the hell does his spider sense work where the other one doesn't? Moving on. I'm going to do some old reviews because, like I said, I have not got a chance to review them. Uh, and then I'm going to do some new ones I got a chance to read, which is cool. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number one. Actually wasn't that bad. This is the regular. It's the Midtown exclusive with Deadpool. And of course the baby variant. But um, this is kind of, it kind of reads, if you've ever seen the movie Titan AE, that's what it feels like when you read this. Like a, you know, a weird space bar and, you know, his father kind of shows up who's apparently the king of the universe or whatever and which I thought he was dead, I guess not. And they kind of one-up each other. He's like, I'm better than you. You know, I got this assassin, hot assassin girl with me, and you got nothing, and I'm this, and I'm drinking, and you're not doing anything, and, you know, whatever. And then uh, he kind of, his father kind of says, you know, I'm telling you that the Earth is off limits, so you're not allowed to leave and go there ever again, and all these things. And Iron Man shows up, and aliens are fighting, and uh, Gamora, she's kind of like, you know, your father set you up because he told you never to go back to Earth, and he's like, what do you think's going to happen? Because he's, there's, they want to take over the planet. Yeah, like I said, I'm gonna go through pretty quickly on these because, like I said, they're they're old news nowadays because uh, all the new stuff's out. So, um, Uncanny X Force number three, pretty cool fight with Bishop. Uh, Spiral is kind of trying to help this girl. Uh, the X Men don't really know she's trying to help her, and they're attacking her and you know kicking her ass. And Bishop shows up and steals her and claims he's gonna kill her. It's kind of like, almost like the exact same thing that happened with the Messiah complex where he tried to kill Hope. But not bad. Uh, let's see, Wolverine and the X-Men number 27. This is basically Dog trying to one-up Logan. You know, he's like, I'm the better Logan. You know, these kids are going to be better off with me teaching them than you. And they fight like these robots and cowboys and Neanderthal men and stuff like that. Interesting book. Uh, FF number 5. Medusa kind of almost gets outed by one of the, her subjects. Crystal's daughter, I believe. She's like, oh, you look a little different. She's like, don't be telling my secrets or whatever it is. And... Towards the end, you see her with the wizard, and I guess it's almost like the... What the hell were they? The Frightful Four? Something like that. I forget what they were called. I think it was the Frightful Four. But yeah. Whatever. Good book. Superior Spider-Man number six, the Age of Ultron tie-in. Which is very interesting with this, uh, because number six is different than the Age of Ultron number six. Which, like I said, back in the day, they used to have tie-ins were just tie-ins they would go in it wouldn't have its own separate number but um 
basically Tony Stark gives Spider-Man this idea. He's like, you know, if you can go and get these things from uh, this lab, from Horizon Lab, um, quick scissor, quick scissor, Quicksilver will help you. We'll set this whole thing up. We can we can really destroy Ultron. And Spider-Man's kind of like, ah, I don't like your idea. I have a better idea. I'm, I'm better than you. Same thing, like, you know, because it's Doc Ock. He's like, I'm better than you. I, I can do a better plan. I can save the world. And he screws up. And then he kind of has, like, a humility moment where he's kind of like, yeah, you know what? If I listened to you, this thing would have worked. He's like, but I, didn't. I went ahead and did things on my own, and I screwed up. But um, it was a cool book. Moving on. Morbius, number three. Which still freaks my girlfriend out. Girlfriend, fiance. Um, the cover just messes with her. I don't, I don't know why. I think it's a cool cover. Uh, basically, he's kind of he bit this leader that was going after everybody, and almost killed him. And then he has a chance. Like the his girlfriend's kind of like you know if you don't fix him, I'm gonna kill you and everybody or all this stuff. So he's kind of working on him, and then he kind of wakes up and attacks. He bites him again. Basically, that's all it is. Um, but it was cool. Uncanny Avengers number five. I still love that cover. Uh, it's got Wonder Man, the Wasp, and uh, Sunfire. Wolverine basically wants to recruit Sunfire. He was like on a uh, drinking binge. He's like, we want you in this in this Avengers team. He's like, I don't want to be bothered. You know how he always is. Um, he's like, we need you there. You know, we, we want to have a better, stronger team. Uh, Wonder Man and the Wasp are kind of like, not really recruits, but they're kind of like watching over things, I guess. They're kind of like getting ready to help with like press conference, things like that. And the Grim Reaper attacks. Very cool. And uh, A plus X number six. Back on the board, people. Back on the board, finally. The last issue sucked. This one was really cool. It was really fun. Uh, Wolverine and Ca uh, Captain Marvel, Carol Danvers, they're playing uh, poker or something like that, and they're betting who would win, an astronaut or, or a caveman, and, and it was just really cool. It was really funny. And then they had uh, The Thing and Gambit. Uh, they were in a poker game, and they kind of uh, hustle these people, the Ancy Street Gang. It was cool. A lot of fun. Moving on. Uh, let's see. Deadpool number seven, which was interesting. Uh, how it says Marvel then instead of now. It's funny because when you read the beginning, it says that they didn't have the original issue ready. And they talk about how they used to have in the old days, and like especially in the 70s and 80s, emergency issues that if for some strange reason the issue they wanted couldn't make the deadline, they would pull this thing out of nowhere and be like, you know, this is an issue, and then next time will be the new one. Supposedly what they do with this, they didn't have the, the other one ready, as they claim, which is kind of a joke. And um, it's like supposed to be set in like the 80s, like the Bronze Age, and <laughs> Deadpool's in the Bronze Age. and It was just funny. Uh, he makes a deal with the devil. Well, a devil, a demon, or whatever. That um, he can get Iron Man a drink, and if he does, he wants uh, to be in on, on the laser disc craze. Uh, he wants to make them bigger and better. It just, it was funny. It really was a funny issue. Uh, moving on. Thanos Rising number one. And of course, the baby variants. Who's your little Infinity Gauntlet God? Who's your boojah, boojah, boojah? I really love this this cover. Uh, my fiance is like, why do you like that cover so much? I was like, I just think it's cool that this friggin' guy who kills, you know, can kill worlds and stuff like that, and has the Infinity Gauntlet, and was basically a god. Him as a kid with a little blue, it just like, it just makes me laugh. Um, but this is basically like a Thanos origin story, and it was really cool, it was really well done. It shows him when he's born, and his mother is kind of like, you know, kill it, destroy it, you know, because he doesn't look like anybody else. Uh, he's from like a, one of the moons of Saturn, and they show him as an adult that he destroyed the entire moon. And uh, his mother tried to kill him, winds up in an insane asylum. Uh, his father's like this top scientist, almost like Superman kind of thing. And, uh, you know, he's kind of picked on as a kid, you know, because he looks different, but then they kind of accepted him, and then, whole big thing, but it was just, it was a really good book, it was really interesting, it was well drawn, and, um, it was a cool little, like, origin kind of story, and I'm looking forward to the next one, and, um, if you're a Thanos fan, definitely pick it up, uh, and the other thing is, the way Thanos is going, you know, how big he's gonna be, this is gonna be one of those books, I'm telling you, that's gonna be hard to get, uh, especially this one, too. <laughs> Love that cover. Uh, moving on, Superior Spider-Man number seven. Uh, Beast Collectibles was just talking about this. Uh, he's like, "Why does is am I the only one who sees something wrong with the cover?" And he was talking about Spider-Man's foot. He's like, "Does he have a spider camel toe, or is that Nightcrawler?" Um, Hippie. It's part of his his costume. His new costume is supposed to be, I guess, like the feeder or more ninja-like. I guess and he's got claws that are on there. 
which they don't show in this thing. So I guess he's able to dig and also well, dig into stuff a little better than he used to. And also the claws have his tracking stuff on there. Um, the one thing I didn't like about this book, uh, basically it's the Avengers kind of uh, kicking Spider-Man out. Uh, but the one thing that was really cool, before I get to one I didn't like, is uh, Cardiac. Cardiac is back in this book. And uh, I always thought Cardiac was cool, like a cool little character, which I'll show you. Yeah, that is part of him. Cardiac's back. Um, the other thing that was interesting is that Peter Parker's consciousness, or whatever the hell he is, is, is starting to gain control over the body. Like, it can made it, uh, as you can see... He was trying to write a message while he was sleeping. It's very cool. But, um, like I said, before I get into the whole thing, the one thing I didn't like, which I love the costume. I think the costume was really, really cool. But there's one page in particular. Yeah, I guess this will do it. Um, I do like the new design, but I don't like the fact that he looks like how thin he is. I remember Hippie said it in number 700, he looked like an alien. Um... I know Spider-Man's not supposed to be, like, huge and bulky. Like, he's always better when he's, like, slim. But that's too slim. That's, like... I mean, granted, in the 90s, it was a little ridiculous when he had, like, these giant, giant legs and, like, this little body. But I don't know. It just really gets to me. But anyway, um, the Avengers kind of, t you know, call up Spider-Man. Like, you know, we need you here. We want to talk to you. And, uh... Because he almost kills Cardiac. Cardiac was trying to get, like, this uh, thing to help this cancer patient. I think it was. Or brain surgery or something like that. And, um... He goes to kill Cardiac, and, and uh, Peter Parker kind of stops him. He's like, you know, don't. And he moves his hand just at the right moment. And the Avengers kind of like, you know, what's wrong with you? You know, you killed this the massacre guy. You know, you put everybody else in the hospital. They're all gutted. You know, they're barely hanging on. We want to know what's going on. We're going to do a physical on you. We're going to do a whole thing. Just to see what's wrong. And he kind of flips out because he knows. And Peter Parker is kind of like the, the essence. He's like, yes. He's like, finally. He's like, I thought you guys were all eating stupid pills. He's like, you finally, you know, Earth's mightiest uh, heroes. Uh, it's about time. He's like, that's right, Otto. He's like, your time's up. He's like, it's time to, you know. And he's like, no, I quit. I'm done. He's like, you're not walking out of here. Like, Captain America's like, you're not leaving until this is done. We're going to find out what's wrong. And he throws Captain America and Wolverine pops his claws. He's like, let's do this. And uh, Peter Parker's like, I wish I had ghost popcorn right now. It's just going to be awesome. So you got to wait for the next one. But it was cool. It's very, very cool. Alrighty. Long video, like I said. But I'm going to go into some other stuff. Uh, I've been getting some requests. I'm a hippie. It's collectible. It said, uh, had asked me a question, which I really couldn't answer. Um, what are some of the weirdest uh, requests or qu questions I've gotten? Which they're mostly, they're not really weird. Um, you know, show my boobs, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, no, no, not really, not really. I don't really get too many. I mean, every now and then I'll get like a request, which is more of like a, uh, not just a request, but sometimes it's like um, trying to help the channel, I guess. But, you know, when the haters hate, they ask you all sorts of weird crap. One thing I, I was told is I don't show enough toys. Like I said, I, I've been trying to show toys and, and DVDs, so I'm just I'm losing track of like so many things lately. That um, like I said, I have so much on my mind, especially with moving and, and and everything else that's going on. I'm like, oh my god, and I just can't remember everything at once. Um, so here's a couple toys just to appease. This is an old Superpowers Lex Luthor. Here's a Superpowers uh, Steppenwolf, I think he was called. And a Superpowers Green Lantern. Yay! Woohoo! Crack up! Crack up! Crack up! Anyway, um, <laughs> alrighty. Some uh, some some questions here. Oh, well, more like comments, I guess, and, and and some questions. Um, one person who was anonymous, which is <laughs> the way it seems to go, uh, had said, "This is kind of funny because I actually I was I was interested in this one, that I'm always talking shit about Midtown and how bad they are and." And how come I don't give any more pros to the cons of comic book stores? And why do I hate Midtown so much? And, you know, all this stuff. And then it's funny because on his, uh, towards the end of the comment, it was, well, I love Midtown because they're great and they always give me free stuff because I promote their, their, their store. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> granted, I don't throw a lot of pros out there on comic book stores, which I probably should because there really are a lot of pros to, to the stores I go to. Um, but lately they've had a lot more cons than pros. Um, and I don't get free stuff from anybody, so I'm not going to, you know, kiss ass and, and, 
and be biased like oh this store is great because they're giving me free comic books under the table and everyone with their store or something like that or free toys or, or whatever I'll tell you how it is I'll tell you how what I see and, and, and how it goes and even if I did get free shit I still would tell you how it is um, the pros of Midtown alright I'll, I'll give you that they do have stuff cheap you do get a nice discount when you buy them from them their shipping is a little ridiculous from time to time uh, the one thing I still don't like on one of their, their cons, I guess, would be how long it takes for them to ship a book to me, and I live in New York, which is kind of funny. Um, so there's that. But it is cool that they bag and board everything, which is nice. I don't have to go ahead and waste my bags and boards. And um, every now and then they do have some good deals. Uh, let's see, what else? Let's see, I wrote this stuff down, and so quickly I'm like, oh. Um... Hmm. Oh yes. Um, <laughs> my friend wanted to talk about our experience that we had at the uh, Mock Tom comic book store, which a uh, <laughs> lot of fun. A lot of fun. I uh, went yesterday looking for a box. They didn't have any. Um, <laughs> walked in. My friend's like, uh, he's just starting to get back into comics. Uh, he's like, you know, what should I start with? I'm like, Jesus, man. I was like, I don't know. I was like, what do you like? He's like, I like Batman. I like, you know, almost a mirror image of me, I guess, in a way, like the stuff that he likes, um, but I was like, if you like Batman, I was like, it's, it's kind of, I was like, try to get, I guess, the death of the family, I was like, it's a good starting point, and, uh, but they were way too expensive, of course, uh, so he's like, ah, and I was like, if you get a lot of new issues, you're not really going to know what's going on, I was like, Superior Spider-Man, uh, if you find number one, that's a good start, I was like, it's only up to number seven, I was like, that's a good thing, I was like, the, the latest one, you don't really have to know, I guess, too much, you, you can kind of enjoy it. He's like, ah, we went, we found a Superior Spider-Man number one. It was uh, seventy-five dollars, so um, yeah, he wasn't getting that. Um, so I was looking around for some back issues of Spider-Man too, even though my fiance is cracking the whip on me, um, which she is doing better. Uh, I appreciate everyone asking. Uh, I, like I said in a comment that I pumped her full of heroin. She's all right. Once the hallucinations are gone, she'll be good. Um, <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, she actually she is doing a lot better. She uh, was walking around today. She wasn't puking her guts up and she kept some food down so good sign uh, but anyway on to what happened in the store which is kind of funny like uh, my friend has never seen nerd wars before I guess <laughs> looking through those bag issues and he's kind of like circle and he's like I don't know he's looking at some ghost riders he was looking at some of the toys and um, this one guy was talking about which it's just it must be like some kind of thing in the air some kind of you know weird cosmic coincidence I guess um this one, this one guy, never seen him before, not many people I've seen before in there, I was talking to his friend about something, you know, how he's pissed off once again, how the comic book stores don't have the newer issues, they're, they're always running out of the new issues, you know, and he's, he's a little pissed uh, that sometimes, even though he has uh, a subscription, a pull list, they don't always put stuff in his pull list, and um, it's the only store he can get to, which I know how that feels, um, and I'm just listening, and, I'm, and, I'm, and he's getting, like, kind of outraged, and, and um one of the employees is kind of like, ah, you know, we, you know, we're sorry, we told you we're sorry about, I think it had to do with Batman and Red Robin number 19 coming out, and the guy said he's not, not going to be in his pull list because they, they didn't have enough, and he's like, I'm so sick and tired of, of these new issues not being around, he's like, you know, he's like, a lot of stuff I, you know, I ask you guys to order, you don't order it for me, he's like, and then when you do, you charge me a fortune for it, um, he's like, when Helheim came out, you know, I actually ordered number one for me. You ordered it for me, you charged me $23. He goes, it's a little ridiculous. Uh, he's like, you know, and now a lot of stuff, he's like, you guys screwed me on Batman Inc. number 8. He's like, I never got the, the first printing that I had requested. He's like, you guys gave me the second printing. And he's like, and you tried to pass it off as the first printing. He's like, that's a bunch of shit. I'm like, that's pretty cold. And then um, the one guy he was told, he's like, hey, he's like, you know, it kind of sucks. He goes, you know, and, and a week after, you know, Batman Inc. hit uh, number 8, uh, you had number, you know, the first printing behind the counter for 60-something dollars. He goes, you know, this is outrageous. And uh, I can't stand when, when, when comic books do that. And it was cool. I was just like, wow, man. I was like, it's just a huge, it's like a huge problem. I mean, it really is. And I was talking about it on the comments with some people that how greedy the comic books those are. They just, it's it's ruining your fun in, in a way. I mean, I'll be like, you know, what are you talking about? Because a friend of mine again, uh, he was saying, he's like, you know, you should really make a, a, a great video of, of, you know, the stuff that goes on in the comic stores, and I'm like, yeah, I was like, but 
I can make like, you know, three hours of that. Um, and to give pros on a mock time, like I said, they're very, very nice people that work there. Um, guy Larry is an awesome guy. Uh, very, very helpful. He will bend over backwards to help you. But the, the cons is that the pull list things are ridiculous. It really is stupid. Um, which I'll get back into the story in a second. Uh, I do see the point, but it also blows. Like, if you went to comic shows like back in the 90s, well, let's use the 80s. You go back in the 80s, they never had that crap. And they had pull list people, that was fine. But they always had enough of the new releases to get anything through. The 90s were kind of iffy on certain things. They usually had more than you could ever handle. But now it's like, you know, oh, the book's great. We're going to hold one or two behind and we're going to raise the price on you. <laughs> oh, check out our eBay store for better deals. Um, yeah, and King Joe was talking about how they do the same thing. You know, they, they pull the variants. They'll keep them to the side. And then when the book is hot, they'll raise the price, which is totally true. But um, like I said... With the guy, the guy's talking to his, I guess it was his friend, you know, stating how he's just pissed off. And this one employee said, well, I don't shop here anymore. He's like, as simple as that. And he goes, you know what? He's like, I'm on the verge of not shopping here anymore. He's like, I spend, you know, two to three hundred dollars a week, you know, on on certain things. He's like, not always. He goes, most of the time I spend like a hundred dollars or more a week on comics because they're so damn expensive. He's like, you know, three or four dollars a book is ridiculous, which he's right. Like I said, this, this guy was almost like my personal hero there. And he's just like, you know, he was right. He's talking about, like, you know, how much money he spends in the store and how they kind of rip him off. And, you know, they uh, they do give you discounts. Another good thing about Amount of Time, they, every time I buy stuff in there, they give me a discount, which is cool. Pros and cons. Um, and he was talking about, like, just, you know, how just upset he is, and, and rightfully so. Like I said, it, it kind of... I, I, I can go around billions of times on this whole thing where it's... You know, they, they got them, they're in it to make money. All the companies are, comic book stores are, but there's other ways to go about it than what they're doing. Um, you know, like the, the whole pull list thing, I, I think it was Davidus Raccoonus that asked, he's like, you know, I don't understand why you, you can't get a pull list. Um, Bailey's Comics, uh, so that's one one of the places where they have the pull list. Great, great store. I used to work there. Like I said, it, I was going there since the 92, you know, all the way up. Um, problem is, they're, they're not a small store, but they're not a big store. You know, they're kind of a little bigger than small, but, you know, like, it's hard to explain. But um, they only have a certain amount of areas for, like, the pullers. Like, they have underneath the counter is, that's all it is. It just goes, like, the counter obviously is like a, you know, square kind of thing. Basically, from here all the way around are just boxes and boxes of people for pullers. And um, the real reason they don't do any pullers, you can't get anybody new on there, is they said, number one, like I said, the, the manager, Trung, great guy, very cool. Like I said, he, he goes above and beyond to try to help me, even though I'm not on a pull list, he'll try to find stuff for me, and uh, they give me discounts too. Um, the problem is, they've been getting burned so much by the pull list. Like, you know, some people have books in there for months and months and months and don't pick anything up. And then by the time they go to, they come back or they come in or whatever it is, you know, they'll be like, oh, do you, you know, you got to pick up the stuff in your in your box. It's been there like six months or something like that, you know. Um, oh, no, I got them already. So now the store's kind of burned because they're like, great, now we have, you know, all these issues we could have sold, you know, which is kind of a double-edged sword because if you have something in a, pull, in a pull box where it's like, you know, say Batman Inc. number eight, and you know somebody's going to buy it, but you're obligated, you know, you kind of like you want to have that honor kind of thing, like, you know, I'm not going to sell it, this guy wants it, you know, he's, he's on the thing. It kind of sucks. I think there should be a certain time that, you know, after a month or something like that, if maybe two, if nobody picks it up, you should be allowed to be like, hey, you know what, I got one, hang on a sec, this guy hasn't picked anything up. There you go. It's evil, but um, I remember there was a time, not even kidding, uh, when I was working there, when they had all these pull boxes, uh, that once a certain time period came, they always had, which I don't think they have it anymore, which is kind of sad, because I remember doing it over and over again. Um, the owner, we had like a list and he would always go through the list, see who wanted what. And on each box was a list of the people that were in that box. Uh, and the dates that they, you know, things were in there, you know, what time they pick it up, stuff like that. You know, inventoried. And if it went past a certain date and that guy did not come in and pick up his books, it was fair game. Uh, I think it was like a month and a half. After if anyone was looking for the book, yeah, hang on a sec, you would check the list. Like, all right, this guy never picked the stuff up. 
hey, too bad. And it kind of backfired on, on him a couple times because they would have people come in looking for a book and they'd have the pull list, you know, he'd run out. But this is back when they had, you know, copies. You know, they had plenty of copies. Um, you know, he'd be out of them, you know, 100 issues, some of that, it's gone. Um, I remember especially with the Maximum Carnage, those things were gone. Um, and the guy, one guy had like the whole thing of Maximum Carnage in there that he didn't pick up. And uh, somebody came and looking for it and the owner's like, hey, you know what, if you're looking for it, I have the whole collection you need. And the guy's like, I don't have any of them. He's like, you know, what what kind of deal? Made a deal with the guy, sent them the whole thing, um, discounted price. And then the very next day, the guy came in to pick up the books. So, um, yeah. But um, that's pretty much the problem is that they're, they're, one, they're getting burned a lot. I know there's Bailey's. I don't know about them all the time. And two, they don't have the room. Uh, basically, they got drunk. He's like, you know what? He's like, I'd love to put you on a pull list. He's like, but I just don't, I don't have the room. He's like, we're just, there's no space. There's just no way I could, I can, you know, even if I got into the box, there's just nowhere to put it. And, um, so it is. I'm on time. They claim they're full up too, so I, I don't know. Uh, that's the way it is. But it's kicking the face. I, I just still find it annoying that you can't just go in a comic book store and say, pick up Superior Spider Man number seven. It's gone. Sorry. Um, especially, it's mostly seems to be happening with Batman lately. More than anything else, it's Batman. Um, I've noticed, like, Spider-Man, I mean, I could go into the comic book store in a week and they would still have some of these. Or I would go in, um, well, this is already gone, I know. I, I, when I went in uh, yesterday, Thanos is gone, so I'm, I'm kind of glad. Another good reason that, that I order from Midtown is it's, it's reliable, but I get the stuff, you know, rather than going to Wednesday and, oh, we got already pulled. That's one of the main reasons why I went Midtown, is I don't have to worry about a pull list. I can just go in there and get it. But um, Thanos is gone. I know they had a couple dead pools left. Um, but the point, like I said, mostly it's Batman. Lately it's been Batman. Batman Inc. was, you know, bitch to find. Uh, thank God I had that already from Midtown. Uh, Batman and Robin. Batman and Red Robin, number 19, I know is going to be gone. So I'm glad I pulled that, you know, have that in Midtown already. Uh, you know, certain things. But it really is true that it just sucks that these... You can't go into a store and say, Hey, you know what? I'm looking for this. And I can go on and on. I'm not going to do it. I'm um, <laughs> going to throw some, uh, some shout-outs. I don't always do shout-outs. Um, like I said, I, I, my excuse is that, you know, if, if every day was a sunny day, what's a sunny day? Um, not that I don't want to do shout-outs, but I just think they're, they're more meaningful... Uh, when I'm able to discuss everybody a little better and give you everybody a rundown. But these guys, I want to throw out a, a couple shout-outs to them because uh, I've been commenting a lot on my videos and I got a couple shout-outs from some people on here too, so I'd like to show the same respect throughout back. Um, before I even do that, I want to throw out something else too. Well, this is a lot of rambling. YouTube is really pissing me off. Really pissing me off. Um, this whole new system sucks. It flat-out sucks. Um, I'm going to apologize to people. Comments... I'm not always getting them. I don't know what the hell is going on. I'll, I'll look at my emails, and it'll say, you know, how I'll have like 15, 20 comments. I'll go into YouTube, you know, I'll, I'll go into the, the inbox thing, and it'll say I'll have two, when I really have 20. And then I'll go in there, and, you know, i got to go looking through it, and, and sometimes they don't pop up, and then a week later they'll pop up on there, and I'm like, this is just ridiculous. And the same thing with the videos. I am so far behind on videos now, it's not even funny, and I really want to apologize to people because I've had time to watch them, I've been watching as many as I can, I've been trying to comment on as many as I can, um, but the problem again is I put them on the watch later, and YouTube takes them off, uh, I had like, I think like 40 something videos on there, and I went back the very next day, and I'm like, I know I have 40, I wrote it down, just, just to make sure I wasn't going crazy, and there was 10, I'm like, alright, wait a minute, what happened to them, and I had to go back and try to find them. And also, I'm not getting the people on my feed. I'm on you know, well, the feed, but, you know, the whatever that thing is, the, the newer videos, it's just not coming up. So now I have to look through everybody's single things to see if they've done new videos, which is kind of annoying. No offense. But YouTube, Jesus. <sighs> anyway, I want to thank uh, Gimpy204 for the shout-out. Appreciate it. Legendary Collectible, thanks for the shout-out. And, um... Some other shout outs I'm going to throw in there. There's people, like I said, comment, uh, have been commenting lately. Uh, Rick and Dave's comic book hour. Cool guys. Check them out. Like their videos. Nothing like a hot woman in the beginning as well. 
Um, <laughs> Hippies Collectibles, always, always a cool guy. Uh, King Joe, David S. Raccoonis, Green Lantern 223, Comic Book Jedi, uh, Mr. Fixit Smash, Mongo Stone Time 07, Captain Cummings, Coast and Bromstone. I really appreciate the comment, my friend. Uh, I really do look forward to uh, being on the show uh, soon. Uh, I've told Captain Cummings because he, he had asked me uh, a while back, and he said, you know, I have an open invitation, which is really cool, um, to be on the the, the, ta the Comic Talk podcast, uh, which is, it would be my honor. I just, I really, as much as I want to go on there, I'm like, yeah, I, I, need, I need it, I need it, I want to be on there. <laughs> um I'd rather I'd rather wait till I, I've, I've moved and actually have a better location and, and can actually do it because uh, my fiance she she <laughs> the the computer's in the living room and you know, you know the TV's here so uh, whenever the, the the podcast is on it's usually during uh, her TV shows so it would just be a noisy mess and I'd rather just do it when I have the computer in my own new cave and I can just focus and. So that's the real, only real reason that I'm not on the on the, the show, uh, is because of that. Because uh, she get pissed off and <laughs> shut up. I'm trying to watch my show, Vampire Diaries. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. So, <laughs> Ghost and Bromstar, thanks. Uh, Curse of Men, The Incredible CJ, uh, Running with Comics. Uh, just appreciate you guys making the comments. Very cool. Um, I did get a couple of requests. Um. One guy kept asking when am I going to show that new Heroes and Villains thing. That thing is taking some serious time working on it. Uh, another one was talking about uh, how, when am I going to put my video up that shows the references to all my videos. Working on that. It takes a long time. Um, trying to make them good. Uh, another request was I, I need to do more reviews. And why don't I have a pick of the week? Um, me... Uh, with reviews, I try to get them done as soon as I'm done reading them because it's fresh in the mind. Uh, but like I said lately, I'm just I just have so many things going on with uh, life in general that it just it's rough. It's hard to do the reviews. And um, a pick of the week is a great idea. I know a lot of people do do it on their channels, which is one of the reasons why I don't do it. I'm like ah, you know, there's so many cool books. I don't know if I can pick one. So maybe I will start doing a pick of the week just because it is a cool idea. But I just don't want to steal anyone's thunder I guess you know because there's so many people that actually do have a, a cool pick of the week thing and and I, I don't want to step on anybody's toes but it's a good idea and another question was same thing with reviews um I should I can't read my own writing anymore my hands have been killing me lately um I need to mention the artists and writers more as well as show more inside the comics okay um I guess that means show, I guess, the inside of the comic. Go through it. Um, if anybody out there, it's open to everybody, uh, wants to see more of that, let me know. Like I said, I got the one request. I just don't always do it because it, it, it's time-consuming. And as for the, the artists and the uh, the writers, I probably should show you know show them some respect and uh, shoot at their things. But usually, I just when I show the cover, you can usually see who's on there. You know, Dan Slott, Victor Alazaba. Humberto Ramos, Edgar Delgado. Uh, yeah, so maybe in the future. But if people want to see more of, uh, I don't want to steal uh, <laughs> running with comics uh, thing, an in-depth look on things, and let me know. Uh, you know, you see something that you like that I'm showing off. You're like, hey, I'd really like to know about that comic a little more. Can you can you tell me a little more about it? I'm more than happy to. It's no problem at all. I don't mind. I love hearing myself talk. Um, <laughs> But uh, if you really do want to, like I said, if you really want to know more about a certain comic, just write in the comment or send me a message. It's no big deal. Uh, say, hey, you know what? Can you can you show me a little more of Superior Spider-Man number seven? Because I don't I don't know if I want to buy it. I don't know if I want to you know spend the money on it. It's really good, you know, things like that. Um, like I said, let me know. Cool. I think I've gone over everything. Uh, yeah, I believe I did. As long as I can remember. Anyway. Uh, but anyway, if you like what we see. Please hit the like button. If you like what you see, comment away. Like I've said billions of times, go crazy, request whatever you want. Um, I am a little slow on the request lately, like I said, because there's just a lot going on. There just really is. Um, with packing, moving, help my fiance's you know, mother move is a disaster. 
flat out disaster. Uh, it just seems to just nothing seems to be going right with that. So it's it's kind of it's just uh, yeah. oh. Um, anyway, it's not the size of man that matters. It's what you have in it, and what I have in it. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, to anyone out there who's a wrestling fan, I hope you watch WrestleMania and enjoy it as much as I will. I hope. And for The Undertaker, I really hope you win, man. I, I want you to be 21-0 and 0, uh, and go out undefeated. Uh, as much as I like CM Punk, I want to see you win, Undertaker. I hope I'm wrong, and uh, I, I hope you win. Uh, later, everyone.